Hello and welcome to the second part of our two-part series of installing Red Hat OpenShift Container Platform with a disconnected registry. In our first video, we actually built the registry. So if you haven't seen that video yet, uh, I definitely recommend checking that out first. In this video, we're going to install Red Hat, or Red Hat OpenShift using the installer provision infrastructure, also referred to as IPI, against that registry that we just created. So we have a uh, VM that's on uh, uh, on Azure right now that has the registry running on it. We have a domain we're going to use and then uh, over here we're going to actually uh, set up uh, the install and run it and then I've got another window down here that we can actually use to monitor the um, uh, the registry itself so we'll actually see it start to pull images off the registry. All right so uh, before we get started there's some tools we're going to need. We need the Azure CLI. I've already got this downloaded on on this system so I won't be doing that as part of the demo, but I'll leave all the links that I have up here in the description, uh, as well as a link to uh, a script that I've created. If you wanna follow along or, or install it yourself, uh, you'll be able to uh, go through that whole process. So I'll link that in the description as well. Uh, so you wanna just scroll down here, find your version. Uh, I'm using Ubuntu, so I grabbed it, installed it over here. You've got the, some binaries we need to install, uh, the OpenShift installer, which comes with Linux or Mac OS. So you'll grab that. Uh, again, I've already done this as part of our registry install. Uh, you'll need your pull secret for the registry install. We're going to use a different pull secret for our registry, one that's specific to the registry. Uh, so we won't be using this, but uh, if you haven't done that, uh, go ahead and grab the pull secret. And then, of course, our OC and kubectl commands. Uh, we'll grab the uh, command line tools there and install them here. Again, I've already done that. Uh, as a uh, pre-step as well, you need to make sure that you're using an Azure subscription that meets the minimum requirements here that are listed and you have a administrative uh, account that can create these uh, resources and then of course you're going to need a service principal uh, account right here um, so that it can uh, with contributors so you can build the artifacts necessary for ipi install so this is a fully automated installation um, all right so let's take a look at our resource groups we just have this one red hat ocp001 as part of IPI, when it comes up, it's going to create a second resource group. Our cluster name we're going to say is private, so it'll be private dash five random characters dash RG. Inside that resource group, it'll create a private DNS zone, and um, we'll, we'll put our registry uh, dot private dot shifting dot red uh, record to resolve in that private zone, and then we'll do a uh, appear between this resource group and the resource group that it comes up with so that they can um, uh, network across the uh, uh, across the resource group so that the OCP install can actually reach our registry. Okay, so on this side, let's get started. Again, I've already got all the tools installed. We're not going to use these pool secrets. These were used as part of the initial uh, registry installation, but let's create a directory. Let's say private. That's going to be the name of my cluster. And then uh, OpenShift install create install config dash dash dir equals private and this will walk us through little menu options uh, i've got a uh, public key i'm going to load up into the system so that it um, uh, i can ssh in to the nodes as the core user so we'll select that this is on azure my subscription id i have off screen let me grab that real quick this is so i can Log into Azure, obviously, and my tenant ID. Grab that, paste, and my service principal. Copy, paste, and the service principal password. Copy, paste, and we're doing this in East US. Shifting red is the domain. Cluster is private, and the pull secret uh, that we created as part of our registry is this one. Copy, paste. There. All right. So all that's ready. Now we have to uh, make a few modifications to the um, to the uh, install config file, which is now in private. So we look at the private directory. We'll see, whoops, we'll see our install config file. Uh, the first thing is we need to add our CA. So our, when we did our registry install, we uh, installed a registry uh, certificate. 
and we also have a CA for that certificate. So we need to install it here in this install config as an additional bundle. So we'll echo, echo in additional trusted bundle into, um, into that uh, install config YAML. And then we will cat our uh, CA certificate into that YAML as well with the appropriate spaces. Bang. So we grab that. Well, this is on uh, Ubuntu. So we've got uh, our CA stored there and we're just putting that directly into our install config. Uh, we did actually use the correct uh, 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 pull secret, so we don't have to worry about that. But we do need to put in our image content sources, which was output from installing the registry. So if we do private install config, uh, we can see, well, let's go through these options here. Maybe go to the top. Uh, shifting red is our domain. Uh, we're actually going to install two workers. I don't know if I got enough resources in this subscription for three workers. So we'll just do two workers. We will install three masters. Three masters are required for any form of Kubernetes because it uses a RAF consensus cluster where two masters need to survive to elect a leader. So three is definitely what we're going to use. Uh, private is the name of our cluster. Here's the default networking. Uh, everything is going to be on Azure. Uh, here's our authentication just for our registry. So there's nothing else in there. And so let's add our content sources. There we go. Do, 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 do. All right, so this was uh, provided to us by our registry when it installed. Uh, so this is uh, when, you know, when it starts looking for this Quay, we're gonna provide this. When it starts looking for this, we're gonna provide that, right? So it's a mirror. It may try here, but then it'll come back to that. Uh, so this is definitely where we want it to resolve to. And that is it. All right, let's clear that. Uh, and again, this is IPI, so it's going to be fully automated. OpenShift, install, create, whoops, create cluster directory private. OK, so we've got our, uh, our registry key, our pull secret. That's loaded. We've got our trusted bundle. That's in there. We've got our content sources. That's in there. Those are all required to access our registry. I'm going to go ahead and execute this. All right, so now it's going to use those credentials and start building out the infrastructure. We'll see that kind of pop in here. In the meantime, I'm going to be monitoring uh, this side over here because what I'm waiting for is that other um, uh, resource group pop up. Again, it's going to, it's going to be private dash five random characters dash RG. And I want to go into that resource group and add the registry record so it can resolve to its correct IP address. And then I need to bind uh, the two together with a peer relationship on the VNets so that the OCP nodes can access the registry. Uh, because again, they are in two separate resource groups. So this will take uh, probably a couple of minutes for it to actually pop in. I'll keep monitoring it. And then uh, I'll come right back to you when, uh, when it finally pops in. Okay, the resource group just popped in. Again, it's private and then some random characters, RG. So let's go into there. Looks like everything's starting to come up. So let's uh, let's first do our peer relationship. So we can go in here and just do a peerings. And we'll add a peer. We'll say uh, private registry. And I'm just taking all the defaults. The remote one will also be called the same. Uh, again, all the defaults here, uh, virtual network. So since this one's coming from the um, OCP net, we're gonna go to the uh, net that has the uh, registry in it and click add. That'll build that relationship. All right, so go back to our resource group here. So hit refresh. Great, so it looks like bootstrap Nick's coming up. And that one is uh, 10 6 okay it's good to know now we just need to wait it's going to create an image and then it will clone uh, these VMs from that image and that takes a few minutes for it to download oh we do need to add the registry record here so let's do that uh, so add a record set registry that's our, our host name for the registry is registry.private.shifting.red so that'll be it and the IP address is 10.242.4 and we'll say well, every minute. There we go. All right, so now the nodes can resolve it. 
and come back here, refresh. Yep, so we just need to wait for the, uh, it will see the image pop up and then uh, VMs will start cloning. Meanwhile, over here in this screen, we're just gonna monitor port 5000. So we'll do sudo tcp dump port 5000. And so that's our registry port. We'll just leave it monitoring. And then once the nodes come up, we should start seeing their IP addresses. And if we go into VNet here, we should be able to look at uh, them. So the bootstrap is 06, and then our master 0 is 5, uh, 7, and 8. So we should start seeing uh, 06 come up first. And then once that's uh, up, we'll see five, seven, and eight start to sync as well in this uh, on this registry here. There we go. So bootstrap image is coming up. So it's going to come up. It's going to uh, clone its operating system, and then it should uh, fetch the uh, bootstrap ignition file. Uh, also, that should have been uploaded to Azure, and then we should see it start to. Uh, fetch the images for um, for joining the cluster and bootstrapping the master nodes. Okay, we can start, we definitely see uh, packages starting to fly here. Um, so it looks like the bootstrap node has successfully connected to it. Um, that IP is 10.0.0.6. Pulled up this uh, pulled up this other logging screen so you can actually see the packages that it's downloading. Definitely grabbing all the assets from it, so that's great. And it's still the Bootstrap node, 06. And it's waiting for the uh, port 6443 to come up. There we go, containers are being built right now. What you're seeing is normal. It's got to start to containers as there's health checks that are going on. This is all fine. There we go, so it failed all those pre-checks, now it's built everything. There we go, we got five, seven, eight. I see all those IPs flashing right here. So now the bootstrap's complete and the master, uh, masters are coming up. So that's great news. This is all fine too. It's, if it has any errors, is uh, unable to find anything, it's just it's still loading on the master nodes. <clears throat> it's still five, seven, and eight flying by right here. Once the masters, masters come up and join the cluster, we'll start seeing the worker nodes uh, pop in. Okay, as part of our log here, we see that the uh, API service is now um, up and we're waiting for the bootstrapping to complete. All right, pulled the logging over here again so you can see what's going on. So we got pods starting to fire up. Uh, they're in a not ready state, but the cluster is definitely coming up. So we'll just uh, wait for that. And again, once the, um, once the bootstrap process is complete, we should start seeing the worker nodes pop in. Uh, I got a private Nick here for one of the workers. Fresh. Yep, so they're starting to come up. It's great. Looks like the control plane operators, everything's done. A lot of that already exists. That's great. Uh, let's check that VNet. And do we have any workers? We do. We've got uh, 32.4 and 32.5. So we should see those come in here. There we go. One of the workers, 32.5. There we go. So the bootstrapping is complete. So now it's removing all the old bootstrap services. Uh, yep, the workers are starting to come up now. They're fetching their images from the uh, from the registry. That's great news. And we'll start to see all these bootstrap things drop off. Refresh. Again, we only picked two workers, so we got one and two here. These two are updating themselves right now. Yep, 
then when all this finishes, we should be able to access the uh, console and we should be able to uh, access the uh, CLI as well. So give it just a few more minutes. Okay, great. So uh, looks like it completed. Looks like the elapsed time was about 36 minutes. Gives us access right here to our URL. So let's uh, jump to that and log into our cluster. And here's our temporary kub admin password. Oops, uh, private certs are generated here, so this is to be expected. Yes, I really mean it. And it will happen again. Show details, visit the website, visit the website. Yes, I really mean it. And then kub admin, and then our password right here. Copy, paste. Oh no, there we go. Nice new shiny IPI cluster 461 built from a private registry. There you go. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, comments, please uh, leave them below. Uh, I will put links, like I said, in the description following this video to uh, so you can follow along and then the script that I used to actually do the install and uh, building this environment was pretty simple, right? All right. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time.